All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the top 10 EDC knife brands in my collection. Now, undoubtedly, I've done videos talking about like how many brands there are in the EDC knife collection, and there are a lot, or I have a lot, and I try to collect a lot of different brands. And what I was thinking for this video uh, is ultimately, you know, going over knife companies that make or produce a solid amount of EDC um, knives in good variants and overall like knives that just really are super applicable to EDC, I guess is the best way to put it. So if you don't see your favorite knife here or your favorite brand here, it doesn't mean that it's not a good EDC knife brand, it just means that I have other options in my collection that I just happen to like a little bit more. In addition to, there are some super solid uh, brands. Like I said, like I love most, like probably 95% of the knives I own. So it's always hard to make like brand specific or like really narrowing down the uh, amount of brands that I like because I like them all within reason. So anyways, with that out of the way, let's talk about the first EDC knife brand. So for me, I'm gonna choose for Number 10, and we're going to go from worst to best, is going to be Zero Tolerance with this one in particular, the ZT0450. Now, the reason why I'm placing ZT so low on this list is actually I think they do a really, really good job, and I love pretty much most of their designs. I have the ZT0450, the 562, and both of mine just have to be carbon fiber. I honestly think that Zero Tolerance does a superb job. The biggest reason why I'm placing ZT lower on this list is because unfortunately and tragically for many reasons, ZT is just not killing it as far as a brand goes. Like they're really not releasing a lot of new um, designs they're not really working with a lot of people anymore and as a, as far as it goes like zt as a brand is kind of on the decline unfortunately it really upsets me because i think zt in the past has had a phenomenal run you know they've made amazing knives like the emerson collaboration the zt 630 um they you know made beautiful knives like the zt zero 450 and 460 line and the you know 62 and the 52 um they really do have some really awesome designs and as you guys can see with this guy you know really really great action super smooth it is running on kvt bearings if i remember correctly um and it's just awesome and i will say i love their full carbon fiber they really do an excellent job like most companies do not make a full carbon fiber scale at this price point but kershaw does bring in a full carbon fiber and titanium scale and so overall like there's so much value in these knives that they're so hard to go wrong with um, i really love them and i wish i could place them higher on this list it's just the fact that they like I said, they're kind of like as far as their company goes, they're like on the decline, so they're not really producing a lot of new knives. All right, next one up, number nine, is going to be Demco Knives. Now, Demco is lower on this list for a kind of similar reason that ZT is on lower on the list, and that is because their lack of designs. There's just not that many out there. Now, the cool thing about Demco is unlike ZT, like ZT is kind of going the way of the dinosaur, unfortunately, like they're on the decline, whereas Demco Knives is only beginning to make more, right? So you're beginning to see more and more from them. This one is the 80-20. 20.5. This one's in the shark's foot, which is essentially their version of a sheep's footed blade. Um, so a little bit more practical for some applications. I do have two Demco or 8020.5s. So both of them are Taiwanese and Aus 10A, but I actually really don't mind it. The Aus 10A takes a hair blistering edge on it and it is just an overall super friendly uh, blade to carry and use so i will say i love the uh, shark's lock it's not always the most comfortable because you do have to watch this ramp but it is super user friendly and just a joy to use so anyways the 80 20.5 but demco knives as a whole is number nine number eight is going to be emerson knives now i'm placing emerson knives at number eight primarily because of the reason why a lot of these lower tiered blades or brands are getting placed where they're at is because 
because of the fact of their just almost like decline, right? So Demco is making more knives, so they will probably rise through the ranks. But unfortunately, Emerson is another one of those that they're not necessarily making less design. So they are technically, uh, the biggest thing I dislike about them is they're kind of walling themselves off from the community. So what I mean by this is Emerson, they make a lot of really cool designs. This one is the Horseman, which is the mini CQC8. Love the blade. I have quite a few Emersons now, but the problem with the Emersons as a whole is they are realistically only making knives and selling them direct to consumer. So there's no like manufacturer, you know, you can't go to like Blade HQ and buy these new. You can pick up them, you can pick them up on secondary, which is where I've gotten all of mine. But it is really unfortunate that um, Emerson is kind of walling themselves off. And personally, I think that will lead to larger problems in the future with their company. So for the brand as a whole, and I think that that is a large mistake. All right, next one up, number seven is going to be TRM or Three Rivers Machining Manufacturing. Now I shouldn't have to say it because I've said it before, but the reason why they're a little bit lower on the list is not because of the knives. I actually really, really love TRM knives. Like the ones I've encountered and handled so far, the build, the fit and finish, everything is so good on these blades. But once again, they only make about three or four designs. So there's just not a lot of opportunity for them um, at this moment. Now, the cool thing is is, you know, they are a growing company, so they are making more and more. So similar to Demco, we should see more, you know, different designs and hopefully an increased manufacturing and production from these guys. So hopefully they're able to keep up with that. But as it stands right now, TRM is super cool. Their knives, if you manage to get one of their knives, like you will not be disappointed. They are great blades. All right, next one up is going to be McNeese. McNeese knives and uh, this one is the mac 2 and this is the three inch version now very similar to trm these guys are a little bit newer to the game and so they don't have a very large roster of blades out there and it's actually quite limited but they do have things like the mac 2 auto and they have this knife in the three inch version which is this guy they have a three and a half inch version i want to say and uh, you know they produce different styles and flavors of this knife so once again, the models are a little bit, um, you know, lacking, like there's not a whole lot of different types of models and makes from these guys, but what they've manufactured so far is super high quality and really nice. And so I'm excited to see where these guys go in the future. All right, next one up is going to be Hogue. Now we're kind of busting out of the, you know, makers that only make like three different designs. Hogue has a pretty long and extensive background in knives, even though it's not as well known. Um, they've been making knives for quite some time. They make autos, traditional folders like this guy. The Hogue Deca, I think, is what's really set them on the map for most EDC guys. But they do, they have been making knives for a long time. And I will say I'm very excited to see the Ritter RSK and the Hogue Deca because they are really, in my opinion, like what Benchmade should be right now, but not. So I'm really excited to see these guys and moreover to see what they are going to make in the future. However, once again, you know, Hogue has been making knives for quite some time. So they definitely know what they're doing. They have a lot of experience and that is exciting. All right, next one up is going to be Protec. And Protec, once again, similar to Hogue, has been making knives for quite a long time. Now, Protec is pretty well known, pretty well loved. This is their Strider SNG um, uh, collaboration between Protec. So it's an auto Strider SNG, as you guys can kind of see by the spring and push button nature of this knife. So it is a pretty rad knife. I really do like this design in particular, but Protec has been killing it. And actually speaking of the Strider collaborations, they've been making a lot of what they call the Protec Strider PT Plus. So it's basically a slightly larger version of the PT, which the PT in and of itself is a slightly smaller version of the SNG. So they've been making a lot of ProTech um, Strider collaborations here of late. But that being said, even outside the Strider collabs, um, these knives are just really cool. ProTech does an excellent job. The Malibu and the Mordax are really awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely seeing a lot of innovation from ProTech and 
and my excitement for them as a company is definitely there. And of course, they're going to keep killing it as they do because they are pro tech. All right, next one up is going to be Hinderer. Now, Hinderer is probably a controversial choice here because some people love Hinderer, some people don't. I have a few Hinderer XM18s because those are what I like, though I will say the Project X is definitely one that I could see myself adding to the collection in the near future. The Project X is just such a cool blade. I personally, I really like it. Um, I wasn't expecting it to grow on me as much as it had, but the Project X is really cool and uh, it does use MagnaCut. It's kind of the future for the hinderers but hinder as a whole they do have quite a few edc knives in their lineup and i think the biggest thing that i love about them especially with the xm18 is the amount of flavors that you can get the xm18 in um, the xm18 you know in different you can get it with flipper deletes you can get it you know just as a standard kind of thumb stud flick knife you can get it in a plethora of different steels, different handle options. The same core knife can be made into so many, so many different variants. And these knives are just well-crafted, in my opinion. Some people don't think the same way about hinder. Some people think that hinder knives are not well-crafted. And so to each their own, I suppose. But for me, in my experience, hinderers definitely uh, hold their own. They do well. They may not be the best of the best knives out there as far as craft and fitment goes, but they definitely are really high up, and especially a lot of their more modern stuff. Some of their older knives, like this guy, are not necessarily the best of the best when it comes to EDC um, or carry, or, you know, partly in steel choice. And, you know, the fit and finish isn't always there, but their modern stuff is really hitting the mark well. It is fantastic and honestly, very hard to argue with. Okay, next one up is going to be Chris Reeve knives. Now, this is one that I have quite a few Chris Reeve knives. I have the uh, Umnum Zon, as you guys can see here. I have the Nkosi, the Sebenza 21, and I really do love my Chris Reeve knives. These guys have really grown on me over the years. Of course, like my first more high-end knife was a Sebenza 21 and these guys I mean the craftsmanship of them is just next level like honestly for the price they go for around 450 to 650 dollars for most of their uh, larger models like their large models um, they really are very good like their fitment and their finish is spot on like these guys know how to machine a blade to the nth level when it comes to precision like i've taken apart pretty much every knife you see in this collection and put them back together and the fitment of like how tight these you know like um screws and bolts go back into their holes like they are next level fitment very well made very well machined and the quality really shows because i think i've said a lot um I've said this multiple times on the channel where, you know, a lot of your like lower end knives, they kind of break apart or they break down. Whereas things like the Chris Reeve knives, whether it's Onimzon and Kosi's, Sabenza's, they really break in. Like they just get better with time, whereas a lot of your lesser knives get worse with time. So anyways, these guys are not always the chiefs at engineering. They do take a long time to really, you know, make sure that their product is very well crafted and meticulously thought out before releasing new, you know, variants or designs. So I, I kind of look at them almost almost like the Toyota of the knife world where, you know, they tend to be a little bit more expensive. They tend to be a little bit almost antiquated or outdated, but when they do release those new designs, they're very well thought out. And honestly, like looking at them under a microscope, it's hard to find fault with them uh, outside of just, you know, objectively not liking them or subjectively, I should say subjectively, like not liking them. You know, like if you look at them from an objective lens, like the execution, the detail, the quality is there every time. All right, last one up is going to be Spyderco. And I think Spyderco takes number one because they consistently, once again, not every time, but they consistently deliver a very high level of quality. They also consistently deliver really good designs and they really are there with materials. They are pretty much the chiefs in exploring new materials with things like MagnaCut. 
They were some of the first to incorporate it into knives. With things like 15V, they're one of the only people to incorporate it into knives. Things like K390, one of the only companies to incorporate it into knives, right? So there are so many steels and different, you know, technologies that Spyderco is one of the only companies to integrate it into knives. Even things like the compression lock that you see on a lot of Spydercos, they're one of the only companies to have that. Even the ball lock from things like the Manix 2 or ball bearing lock, whatever you'd like to call it, you know, until the MSI and the Stitch Ram lock came out from Microtech, uh, Spyderco was one of the only companies to have that uh, part of that piece of technology in a knife. So really Spyderco is one of the like chief companies. And I'm not just saying this because I like them. I do. I do have quite a few Spydercos in the collection, but I really do think that Spyderco does an excellent job with their execution, their quality, their materials, and their technology. Like really they do lead the pack when it comes to technology and innovation as a whole. So they, these guys are killing it. They weren't the first to be the best, but I think at this point they've pretty firmly, um, you know, put their, I think they've pretty, pretty firmly cemented their position in the EDC knife community. They do an excellent job, whether it's with their foreign produced Taiwanese knives like these or their American made blades really, uh, whether, it's, whether it's Japanese, Taiwanese, or American, you're really getting a really quality product out of Spyderco every single time. So for me, in my opinion, Spyderco has to be number one because they just do what no other knife company does. And that doesn't necessarily mean that Spyderco knives are the first ones I grab when I go to my EDC, you know, uh, carry but they are definitely high up on the list because they do a good job at what what they do like they they are genuinely good at making knives so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and I